Hey, Frankie. Hey, Frankie, how you been, huh? You been watching a lot of kick lately, I've noticed. A lot of kick lately. This is Frankie when she watches her favorite kick streamer. Imagine this piece of bread is a, the average kick streamer. And then she goes... One, two, three. Okay. Oh, God damn, that was pretty good. Out, 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 out. I'll give you a little piece. Out, good girl. POV Frankie. Frankie just finished watching her favorite kick streamer, Jack Doherty. And I told her, hey, Frankie, instead of watching Jack Doherty, who's a living, breathing human piece of garbage, maybe you should go outside and live your life and try to find that chicken that's been... That's been eating all the feed from the feeders. That wild chicken out there. You know, Gallo de Cielo. That's right, Dagio de Perro. All right, you little bastard. Disculpe, average viewer. Seems like Jack Doherty's a good guy now. And I'm gonna prove it. All right, guys, I'm gonna prove it in this video today. I, I, I've made a lot of videos just talking, quite literally just talking shit. It's kind of what I do on my channel. I talk a bit of shit. I did worse. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like, guys, Jack Doherty is a good guy now. He's turned a new leaf. The adult toddler has been exposing someone online and, oh my god, not he's not actually a good guy, guys. This is, every time I see this kind of shit, I'm like, okay, well, there's a free video right there. There's an interesting free bucket of slop for us to all enjoy for a little bit. To take our minds off the fact that the fifth division of the PLA has more assets than the entire DOD. That's not good. That's scary. A lot scarier than Jack Doherty. This guy's apparently exposing someone who used to work for him, which is an interesting thing to do. Usually it's the other way around. The people who work for, like eventually I'm going to have so many employees try to expose me. I have a bunch of people that work for me and they're all, I mean, quite literally, I love them all. They're all, I would consider them all friends, but it's inevitable. I think someone's going to eventually try to expose me unless I do what Jack Doherty does. And I just start exposing the people that I, that work for me right now for example tara remember, remember tara yeah i wonder what she's been up to probably some pretty problematic shit press like if i should make an exposed video on tara my editor and oldest employee and friend of seven years and exposing this guy that works for him jack unintentionally sort of exposed himself as well and today we'll be breaking down the heated exchanges that have been popping up on twitter it is unbelievable i mean genuinely it's just like i like seeing it i really like seeing the world around me crumble it's i get a weird sort of fetish sort of voyeuristic rush from it does that make sense does that make sense i'm a freak motherfucker. so today we're going to find out which one of these people is the hero truly in this story and we're going to find out which one is more of a pathetic loser spoiler alert spoiler alert spoiler alert they are both pathetic losers holy shit i hate the internet but after this maybe we'll see jack's career take a bit of a uh, decline the decline we've all been praying for to god the big man upstairs pd are you all right she seems concussed <laughs> i became aware of this situation from scrolling you guessed it twitter my favorite website in the entire fucking world it was jack tweeting about his former friend or employee matt gonzalez uh who was trying to expose him after he was with B. He was trying to. He was trying to expose him for a year, and then Jack's trying to re-expose him or expose him or something. It's hard to really know what exactly is going on here. And I'm wearing a blue flannel, and it's springtime in Texas, and the blue bonnets are beautiful, and everyone around me is so just happy. I've noticed lately. It's weird. This f***er Matthew has millions of followers on TikTok as well. He has a bunch of cringe shit, as you probably could imagine. I was literally hitting the gritty. Then eventually, my drink was ready for pickup. Thank you. He's uh, one of these guys. He's one of the, you know, one of these guys. Oh, yeah. Guy. Hey, what if we made a video where we go to Dunkin' to order whatever the last person ordered? Or we drive with the Apple, Apple Vision Pro. What f***ing idiot would do that? <laughs> also, I have an Apple Vision Pro and I don't like it. I want to return it, but at the same time, I feel like I should I should sit with my, I should be in timeout. I should sit with my sin for as long as possible to to be able to understand the gravity of it, um, et cetera, you know, redemption, that sort of thing. So I might just give it to somebody. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think I should do with my Apple Vision Pro? I might, maybe I should shoot it for a video, blow it up for a video or something like that, but it's, it's usable. It's usable text. So I, I really don't know. I'm a, 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 a tangent. I'm a, a bit of a tangent guy. Matthew also has a million subs on YouTube, uh, all from shorts, and he has very similar long form views as uh, Jackie. Okay, abysmal relative to subscriber count. If you get 2.8 thousand views on a long form video and you have a million subscribers, nobody cares about you. 
that's pretty much the end. Buying a Tesla on Elon's birthday. That's awesome. That's really good clickbait. That doesn't even look like Elon Musk. That's a that's a thumbnail that I would do though. I love I love doing that. Just adding people into shit. Frankie. Oh, there you are. Sorry. This guy loves to type in his bios that he's worked with Mr. Beast and Jake Paul. And also, the reason we're talking about him today, he's worked with Jack Doherty. So, you know, epic content creator. It's all great stuff, etc. It's pretty f***ing cool. It's strange that a man with these accolades only has 3,000 followers on Twitter, though. It's like a... I don't know. You can just get a following on TikTok or with shorts so easily. It's weird. It's mind-boggling to me. It's hard getting the long-form stuff. It's hard getting the the rabid audience that we have, me and you. All right, guys? Me and you, what we have right here. All right? Well, you know, what we have, me and you. Me and you, the only person watching. First time I ever heard of Matt through one of Jack Doherty's tweets, which is incredibly embarrassing. I do follow Jack on Twitter, though, and like I've mentioned many times before, I really like ratioing him. I like giving him a good, solid ratio, uh, it's one of my favorite pastimes, and it's something that I really, really, really enjoy doing. It's very easy, though. It's low-hanging fruit, but it does. it's fun. It's fun. He likes to say that I live rent-free in his head because I'm a hater, and honestly, I don't think that's... He doesn't really make me mad, per se. It's just like, I don't know, if there's like a little ball in a tree, or you know how when you walk through a doorway, sometimes you want to slap the top of it? That's what I do on Twitter, but with replying to Jack Doherty's tweets. That's how it is for me. It's not really living rent-free. I don't like dwell on that. It's just something I do when I get the chance because it's really easy and fun and it, you know, makes me look cool. Jack's full tweet alleges that this fella Matt assaulted a girl named Sammy, but Jack and his crew didn't believe her because Matt was their friend. And in addition to that, they didn't want to believe it because they didn't think he would do something like that, obviously, as their friend. My ex-employee mentioned I spent the last year of his life trying to expose me for online clout. I'm done ignoring it. The first girl he actually assaulted was a girl named Sammy at my merch house in LA, and nobody wanted to believe her because we all thought Matt, our friend at the time, would never do something like that. But after I hired him a year later and he lived with me, the same thing and work and happened over and over and I have multiple other girls raining up more than mountain. And one of those girls in my girl girl friend essay is not something to be joked about. Uh, but you know, having Jack Doherty as the hero of the story is really interesting, not the perpetrator or, or, or something. He goes on to say that he hired Matt a year later and this behavior continued and worse and worse and even while Matt lived with Jack. Jack says that this happened over and over again and he has multiple women uh, ready to come forward about it, which is absolutely bonkers if that's true. And one of the women that was wronged by Matt, that's a very light way to put it, allegedly, was Jack's current girlfriend, a person named McKinley Richardson, the same girlfriend he flipped a golf cart on. Pretty fun bro moment. Ah! Ah! I ain't never met a Jack Doherty fan. You know who I really like, guys? Not Jack Doherty. <laughs> I, I, you know, if I had to watch a toddler for a while, I would, I would feel that maybe that's why I don't like him because I feel like he's just an, he's a toddler acting out. He's built like a toddler. It's weird. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me how he can be built like that. When will he hit puberty? Jack says that the horrible things between Matt and his girlfriend McKinley happened at his house and it resulted in eleven guys needing to break down the door because she was. You know, he locked her, himself in there with McKinley and she was screaming and crying for help, which is horrible if that's true. Um, we need to see, you know, more, more, we need to see just evidence, obviously. Jack's not exactly a trustworthy individual. Now, this tweet makes it seem like Matt is a massive piece of shit, but you might be noticing, well, if you knew all this, why is he waiting until now to say it? Why are you waiting to a year? He's not, he's, he hasn't been your friend for a year and you're waiting, bro. If someone was lock themselves in a room with not even my girlfriend, any girl, and it took me and 11, uh, 10 of my friends to get them out, I would beat them senseless, and then I would never see them again, and then they would probably be in fucking jail, to be honest, and I would too. No, I wouldn't be in jail. I'd get away with it for sure. I'm really good at getting away with stuff. In case you're wondering, I've committed a lot of crimes, and nobody has any idea. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I don't. I don't commit any crimes. I'm, I'm a law-abiding citizen, and not like the Gerard Butler type, like the 40-year-old uh, virgin type. This doesn't make any sense. Why would he wait an entire year, especially if this guy's been trying to expose him for the last year? At this point, it makes makes no fucking sense. What do we What do we think, guys? What do we think? What do we think it is? What do you th What do you think the reasons are? What could the reasons possibly? I can't even think of any reasons. I was gonna say, put some reasons up. Put some reasons up on screen editors all right do something 
fucking do something. I can't. Those aren't reasons. Those are not valid. Is, is that the Master Chief over there? Let's investigate. I've got my detective hat on. Go to sour.gg to hopefully get some candy on Friday when it goes live on the site. You guys miss it all the time. It sells out in like just a few hours. It's pretty awesome, to be honest. Anyways, March 14th, two days before Jack would expose Matt, he went on a podcast called the It Is What It Is podcast. Very awesome. And he talked a lot about Jack Doherty. The original video was titled Jack Doherty Girlfriend Caught Cheating Proof. And it had a really awesome thumbnail. I, I don't really know. It is now titled The Downfall of Jack Doherty, but the thumbnail is the same. So I'm not really sure. I like this. I like this. The downfall of Jack Doherty. <laughs> He's like, he looks like a fuck. That's how he fucking looks, dude. That's not, it is not how he looks at all. He looks like Ryan's toy review if he grew up. Not really. He doesn't look like that at all, dude. I'm really bad at this shit. I'm really bad at uh, saying what people look like and then and then sticking with my guns. By the way, the podcast exactly as badass as you think it could be. It's so fucking awesome. I just want to know, want you guys to know that this podcast right here with these four guys in this fucking set and shit gets less views than my podcast where I sat on the floor for three months. That is crazy. That is absolutely... Who are these people? This has 180,000 views. I'm not a hater. I just want to know where the f podcasts come from. And who does this? They hype this guy up. They hype Matt up on this epic f***ing podcast. They say he's coming out from behind the camera to the front of the camera to expose the industry like... Uh, like someone who's done that before. Some guy, a really good example, like... FDR talking about the military industrial complex or Edward Snowden talking about the NSA spying on law-abiding citizens. I'm I'm something's wrong with me. I really have a weird brain. In this epic clip, Matt says that Sam, Neon's ex-girlfriend, had told Jack to talk to McKinley before they had ever even met. Sam told Jack, hey, I have this friend McKinley. Um, Jack, you should get with her. Like, she's pretty, whatever. You should talk to her. This and this and that. But Jack didn't, and McKinley was engaging with all of Matt's social media stuff and eventually talking about how the moment she touched down in Florida, she was in Matt's bed, not Jack's bed. So, you know, trying to start some shit, really. All right, so she's she's about that she's about that action. Yeah, yes. You're about that so action. much to the point where once she flew in, she was already in my bed. The moment she got there, touched down into Florida, she was already in my bed and Jack walked in on us. Wait for that, bro. That's going crazy. Making out, bro. And if you can imagine this gets any worse, it does. They go through Matt's text messages with McKinley. What is wrong with these people? They showed how flirtatious they were with each other, showing them the text messages literally on screen. She says, yes, actually, you were. Then Matthew says, okay, good, same here. And then she says, I love to hear it. All right, so they're, they're flirting back and forth. Let me, let me try, I'm trying to find some more juice up in here. And also, since all this came out, Matt has tweeted them separately in the wake of Jack's allegations against him. This is so insane. Hopefully I see you just weep in. Yes, I hope so too. I'll keep you guys updated. Just got to get the bed up. It's just a bunch of, you know, interesting texts. I don't really said i don't really see why it's crazy it's talking about kissing this is very like middle school oh i don't know i never went to school but it seems very juvenile this seems but i guess they're fucking young anyways what am i even fucking talking about oh, yeah you can hang up if you keep liking my stories i might have to kiss you like your notes keep liking his i get stories no bit. keep it up and i'll have to take care of that what i said i wanted you to take care of it what the fuck you get to take care of it Oh, wow, they're going to kiss each other. I'll see you this weekend. Either I'm going to you or you're coming to me. Okay, okay. I'll let you know if I can come. If not, I can come very soon. Trust. And then there's like uh, some other texts and stuff. Booty sniffer 9000. In the podcast appearance, uh, before Jack's accusations against Matt came out, he talked about the night that Jack would later refer to as the essay on McKinley. He said that she was playing games with him and telling him one thing and then the guys something else. In Bro's podcast appearance, by the way, before Jack's accusations against him came out, he was talking about the night that Jack would later refer to as the night where the bad thing happened to McKinley. Uh, and he said, Matt said, that she was playing games, telling him something, and then the other guys something else. She's telling me one thing, 
and then telling these dudes the other once she finds out everything from Mitchie or whatever and she understood how everything was being mapped out. And she was playing the game. She was playing the game, bro. Like, homie hopped to Jack right away, whatever. He's saying that she was into him first and Jack was a second pick and that is what prompted uh, Jack to speak out about this. And both of their accounts of the situation were wildly different from each other, as you can probably f***ing imagine. So, uh, so yeah, I don't really know what to believe. Matt shared the screenshots, the text, and they seem very flirtatious. Obviously, flirting is not consent, obviously, but they definitely seem flirtatious. And it is expected at this point, Jack threw some insanely hefty accusations at Matt. We need to see some kind of f***ing evidence, obviously. I expect that to come out soon, hopefully. Hopefully very soon. I'm curious to see what kind of proof Jack can provide in all of this if he's going to throw such crazy accusations at Matt. By the way, not that any of this will affect either one of these people negatively in literally any way. And people are like, well, why do you even make videos about him? Because all the people that watch this vicariously through me, they don't they don't support these people. It's the it's the piracy. It's the piracy logic, right? People who pirate games and movies, they're not gonna watch them anyways. All right, if you can't get it for free, if you can't get it uh, at your will and by your convenience, then you're not gonna get it. You just don't care. It's the people are not gonna look up Jack Doherty because of my video. If you do, you're an idiot. What are you doing, dude? Let's exploit the shit out of him, and hopefully I'll make you laugh. Or at least you can see my dogs and smile or something like that. Or get mad at me, someone who is a better person than Jack Doherty, instead of getting mad at him and interacting with him in any way. I mean, look how few videos he gets on his long form content. It's working. We can't help the short form. That's like toddlers, babies. You might be curious. I'm curious to see what kind of proof that Jack can provide after throwing a hefty accusation at Matt, like saying someone locked him in a, uh, locked a girl in a room and 11 people. That's, that's wild. He included a call with the victim of the situation, Sammy, and, uh, and she talked about her experience with Matt in the call. This was on March 16th. In the room, in the guest room that you guys had, and he came to the room and he just like, was you know feeling me and i told him do not do that like i didn't want any of that and then he was trying to like force himself on me and i told him i was like stop you know mm -hmm. and yeah you know it's it's pretty damning stuff it's not good it's all very 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 bad nothing like this has ever happened to anyone that i love or no one that i love has ever done anything like this it's ridiculous that this exists so constantly in these circles. It's wild. Maybe it means something. Maybe it's a sign. Jack made his second video, by the way, elaborating uh, on his perspective of the events with uh, McKinley and, and the Matt situation from a year ago. All right, so I'm just gonna address this because it's getting way out of hand, but basically one of my ex-employees, Matt, he spent the last year of his life trying to expose me and bring me down because he's very jealous and he always says I'm nothing without him, blah, blah. He worked for me for five months. And within that five months, you don't even want to know all the girls that have like came forward about what he's done to them, which I'll get into that in a second. So there's this video that he's posting of him kissing my girlfriend in the back of an Uber. And here's the context to it. That was the very first day I flew her down here, the day we all met her. And I literally had another girl in my bed when she flew down to my house that day. And then right after we went to a club and she got all drunk, he would always do this. I would be with another girl and he would have her friend. So since I was with another girl, he was just all over McKinley nonstop touching her, trying to kiss her nonstop. And she was super uncomfortable and didn't know what to do. It was her first day there. He had a huge ego and would start to do that with every girl and think they all want him, but they don't. Okay, now we have that. Oh, all right, how about this? Are things getting more and more fucking weird for you like they are for me every single day? My innocence is just ripped and peeled away. <laughs> It just keeps coming back and peeling back until it feels like it can't peel anymore and then it just keeps on peeling and it's really hard to like put it back forward and to unpeel it you know it's like putting skin back on an orange you peeled eventually the orange will rot because you removed its skin and that's what i'm talking about right now our oranges are being peeled together jack is talking about these things that happened a long time ago and if you have critical thinking skills which jack does not most content creators do not this is a bad thing. This is a bad thing to talk about now. It's bad to bring this up. This is a former employee who has allegedly been trying to expose him for the past year. And they worked together for about five months or so. They're not friends anymore, I assume, because they're exposing each other. The first thing that Jack accuses this guy Matt of that I've never 
fucking heard before of before in my entire life is essay of a girl named Sammy at Jack's own house. His first house, meaning he's had multiple. And I think he's in Florida now. The first house was in LA. So a lot of time has passed since this happened and him talking about it now. He also says that this happened repeatedly. Okay, Harvey Weinstein, what the fuck? And he knew about it and his own girlfriend knew about it, but didn't address it. <laughs> what? Blend of sexual assault or Jack Doherty, dude. What are you saying? This is just as bad for you to come out with this now. I wasn't gonna talk about this, but why not? What? He only talked about it because Matt started talking about it first. Dude, it's not like you're shit talking each other. This is illegal stuff. This is not good stuff. This is bad. This isn't like, oh yeah, he says uh, the F slur or whatever. I mean, this is fucking terrible. There's laws. I'm like 85% sure that's illegal. I'm just kidding. I'm 100% sure it's illegal. So if we're to believe Jack, Matt's a piece of shit. And just overall, we can tell that Jack is just a piece of shit. He just protects people who sexually assault women. That's what he's admitting to right now, which is fucking, I mean, expected. At this point, it's expected. Once again, falls back to just like a weird convenience thing, man. Truly guilty by association. The comments are hardcore on this. It's so blatantly obvious when you look at it from the, from the, from the, you know, the, the first perspective, initial glance, it's like, are you aware of what you're doing right now? You mean you were hiding it and you were associating with it knowingly and you're, this is your friend, bro? What? This is not a fucking flex. You were a freak. Okay, so anyways, a lot is now being alleged against Matt. So how would he respond to these accusations? Well, he would respond, he would respond for sure. He says that Jack is lying. The end. Uh, this is a really weird response video if you can imagine uh i'm sure you probably you probably could he compares sharing women to sharing underwear and by women i mean mckinley the girl that he allegedly sa here i am to address the stuff that jack is posting on twitter first off when we went to rock bar and the first day that uh, mckinley got there she was super into me she didn't even know that me and mitchy had a thing she wasn't aware of most of the things that were going on and she was super into me whatever we we're done at rock bar we're in the back of the uber and that's where you see the video of me kissing McKinley. And Jack wasn't even with the girl that entire day. He didn't have another girl. So I don't know what he's talking about that he had another girl. He's capping about it entirely. And he wasn't holding her hand in the car at all because he was in the passenger seat. So I don't know how you could hold her hand in the pat from the passenger seat and we're in the back seat. So he's completely lying. He was never holding her hand in the car uh, that day of. So don't know why he's lying about that, but whatever. And I remember we'd be making out my room. Somebody knock at the door. I'd go get the door. And then when I go back to my room, McKinley's gone. So I kind of got the gist that she wanted to move on to Jack. So that's why I literally asked her, like, I can give you up to Jack if you really want that. And she doubled down and she said that she liked me. She didn't like Jack. Jack's not even her type. So in my stance, it's super confusing. This girl's telling me one thing. And then I have Jack and Logan telling me that she's scared of me. So it's like, at the end of the day, how the f am I supposed to know that this girl's not liking me when she's literally telling me to my face that I'm fine and I'm doing everything fine and everything. So it's like, I was asking McKinley, like, what's good with her like do you want to get with jack because if so we share underwear we can share girls and she was like no no you're good you're good that's fucking weird jack just says that he's lying basically he shuts it down he and he extends the the lying claim to a few other things that jack said he reiterated a lot of his points that he made on the best podcast on earth the joe rogan experience shut up oh my god and then he gets to the part about the fucking underwear he says he offered her up that is McKinley. What a strange choice of words to talk about a human being um, and not an object. I offer, you know, my water bottle to those who are thirsty. I don't offer my girlfriend up to people because I'm a man and, um, you know, and my girlfriend is a human being, not an, uh, not a, not a thing to share. Bro, comparing her loosely, albeit, to underwear is so awesome. They're sharing underwear. <laughs> what the f does that even mean, bro? Oh my God. Just a couple of little twinks out in Los Angeles sharing underwear and mistreating girls. Oh, wow. Broads. They probably call them broads because that's disrespectful. Dude, he's such a fucking weirdo. At one point, Matt even posted a video of him and McKinley kissing, using it as evidence of her being into him uh, and that everything between them was consensual. Uh, but he deleted it later because uh, it had her nipple in it. Apparently, it was her request. He explains why it was deleted in his tweet and he shows some of the exchanges stemming from it. <sighs> wow. And after he posted that, Jack threatened to sue him over posting revenge porn. So, uh, these are huge allegations, accusations, whatever the f*** you want to call them. We need to see proof of the McKinley accusations from Jack 
but he, he does, Jack does provide proof for the Sammy allegations, which is the first girl that Matt allegedly essayed. His first victim, Jack posted a call with Sammy on his Twitter. That was his first sort of exposing video of Matt. And his second video was him explaining the events of what happened with McKinley, which happened after Sammy. And they start posting each other's texts and screenshots and stuff. Literally, I don't know, dude. RP is a completely different thing. That's evil as shit. I don't even know what. Look, they're like threatening to sue each other. Just fight. Just how about you duel? Let's bring back duels. I will gladly be the first YouTuber to duel someone. I will fucking duel someone, dude. I have. I'm ready. I'm ready to duel. If anyone wants to duel me, let me know down below. We can set it up. I don't think dueling's. Ill Ill I don't think dueling's legal though. Oh, and by the way, fun fact, some more of Matt's evidence that he uh, provided revealed that he was even more of a piece of shit. He decided to make an epic grape joke when Jack says that he got McKinley to sign an OF contract that was disguised as an NDA, which is contract fraud, and that is a federal crime, especially if McKinley is not from the state uh, in which... Um, yeah, she signed that. You can't just make people sign contracts that are purposefully misleading. I assume this is a joke, like the grape joke that Matt made. What f***ing human pieces of shit these people are. Hey, by the way, Matt also responds to the original allegations from Sammy in the video posted by Jack with the phone call, the FaceTime audio thing. He scrolled through his text exchanges with Sammy. And then Matt made his second video responding from inside a car, but he didn't really f***ing say much. It was a very short response. The biggest difference in this one is that Matt says that Jack didn't care when he's, you know, alleging all this bad stuff happened. He didn't care and didn't even mention it. He didn't say anything about what Matt allegedly did at the time. And he just did, he wanted him to keep working for him, which is a, a pretty bad, pretty bad thing. To, that's, that's bad. That's a bad look. That's a bad look. So this is the craziest part about all of this is that if I did all these things allegedly Then why would he still say I have to edit for him? And if I don't keep editing for him, he's gonna sue me like if I did all this crazy stuff Wouldn't you just tell me to leave and that's it like bye and if you're keeping it in the wraps and not talking about it when it happened or like, you know, like come on like really make it make sense, bro like <laughs> this is like hilarious to me because it's like Dude, like, I really got to make, like, a long video about this or something just to, like, really get into detail on this, but... And, by the way, a lot of people calling out Jack for his f***ing insane behavior and decision to take forever to expose a sexual predator. And he responded to that criticism, and he did so with an epic W, classic Jack Doherty toddler build W. Some people are mad that I didn't talk about these allegations a year ago, but not everything is meant to be handled on the internet. He spent the mess you have a lifetime to make me look mad for God, and I've ignored it. And it's this time people realize the type of person he is. Dude, you guys are both content creators, and he's allegedly essaying other content creators where else are you supposed to talk about it if not on the internet because it doesn't seem like you're gonna fucking do anything in real life about it so you just let it go what do you mean you're letting it go is that what you're doing because it seems like that's what you're trying to do you're just trying to let it go huh he is right though some things do need to be handled off the internet george not found oh my god Ah! Anyways, but quite literally, his entire brand is handling it on the internet. He gets slapped by people constantly and does everything um, on on the internet, dude. It's 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 sad. He's insufferable. And his brain is warped, and you know this is a there's only bad outcomes for this young man. Seriously, this is not going to be good for him. This money won't last for long. It's a candle, so you know start start and stuffing away those assets as soon as you possibly can, brother. Oh, by the way, if anyone you know um, commits sexual assault, do not hide it. If, if, if they actually commit it, um, then alert the authorities, for one, and get a lawyer, uh, and for two, um, you know, warn people about them. Warn people that they're a bad person, potentially. Up until this point, we've heard from Matt, and we've heard from Jack, we've heard from Sammy, not Jack's girlfriend, McKinley, and also not from one of Matt's alleged victims. But she would break her silence on the 16th, the same day all these allegations came out. Her response would be telling her side of the story and her perspective of her interactions with Matt, all written down in the notes app, screenshotted and posted in three parts, which were reposted by Jack. It's a f***ing lot of reading, so we'll just go through it. Matt told her that they were together. She corrected him, said that they weren't. The same week, according to her, cops were called to the house for Matt assaulting another girl. 
Bro. Oh my god! Who are these people? I feel so bad for these poor fucking women. So anyways, this is all just text. Obviously, there's no real proof. There's no real evidence. It's he said, she said, he said, she said. And, you know, it's not how justice works or like a court of law. Um, the burden of proof. There's not really any at all. Maybe you could say that you could look up uh, the police actually being called. You could verify that. That's something that we could actually see because that's a... But even then, it you know, police are called for the wrong reasons sometimes. In this instance... Mm, probably gonna go ahead and believe the, the victim, all right? <laughs> all right, based in red-pilled fellows. Dex piece of shit, that piece of shit. Ugh, both of them piece of shit. Now, what's doubly interesting is it doubly proves that Jack's a fucking piece of shit because it's more of an acknowledgement that uh, from McKinley, the actual victim that Jack knew about this week, what we just read for this long and didn't still didn't talk about it or fire him. What the f bro? If, if people that I hire are assaulting women, I'm going to fucking fire them. I'm going to fire them. I'm going to hold them down, give them a raspberry, and fire them. And yet, the cops were called. He allegedly did this to another girl as well. He, he retweeted this. What a fucking idiot, dude. Everyone's so stupid in this situation. Oh, Matt responded and said, no evidence, no evidence. Let's talk about this on a stream. What do we cannot believe how much shit they made up? She did not once say she was uncoppable until by somebody that purposefully did jail. Or we did scam all their money. They're scamming. They're, these are all shithead people. These are all f***ing horrible people. He has still got to show poof for everything. At least Matt is posting some level of evidence uh, of like a timeline. He's posting screenshots of texts between him and Jack. Showing that after all this horrible shit happened, he was still asking for some work to be done. Maybe it's because Jack's a sociopath and he just doesn't care. And he really truly only cares about essay when it's convenient for him that's seeming like what this looks like right now this is crazy and he's saying he doesn't want to edit any only fans videos 400 dollars a day for only fans videos should i can edit some only fans videos for 400 bucks a day i'm pretty good at editing i could probably do two or three you know i don't know shit he doesn't morally agree with it though also showing screenshots of jack texting him while all this was going down calling him the f slur which is a huge no-no. Hope your five seconds of clout was worth it. Keep in mind you make somebody's name out of your mouth, you obsessed f***ing. Have fun trying to get any girl in the future. You look like just as much of a piece of shit, bro, if it's true. Jack apparently also sent Matt his own address, which is a baller move. <laughs> Very internet of him. And apparently he doesn't live there anymore. People do that shit to me all the time. They send me pictures of my house and stuff. And I like wave as they, they drive by. They send me pictures of my house pretty funny honestly and then the rabbit hole begins guys matt starts to accuse keemstar and drama alert of being on jack's payroll for him to be on his side i really don't fucking know and this all stems from the person who runs the drama alert twitter page having jack doherty number one fan in, in her bio matt then accuses jack of trying to get his instagram banned and paying instagram to get him banned which i don't even know you can fucking do that i don't think that's a thing that you can do i don't think instagram wants to associate with jack doherty in any way professionally I mean, they could quite literally just Google his name and find 500 reasons to not. Really what this shows is how big a pieces of shit are out there. Just posting, and people don't even know. They'll watch a Jack clip of a short on YouTube and just be like, oh, this is, you know, this guy's just like built like a toddler. It's kind of weird, but it's like not hurting me. No, it's, it's actually, everyone around him is rotten. They're rotten. They're, they're actually completely rotten human beings. And this Matt guy has been trying to like, shittily expose him over the last year <laughs> until i don't even know dude what the f it's just so lame like this is all the shit he's tried to expose him uh for up until this point they both just oh my god it's just so stupid put a bunch of tweets of uh uh the, all the stuff matthew was trying to expose him with i have no fucking idea what to believe in this it seems so fake they're all pieces of massive shit they should all be banned and eliminated not really they shouldn't be banned from the internet we can just point and laugh at them yeah also remember this video of this guy just getting punched square in the noggin oh we can't show the whole thing because my video will get age restricted uh but yeah jack is being sued for that assault because of his bodyguard i hope that continues to happen and i hope his life gets completely destroyed it seems like it's 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 likely it's actually there's a chance of this happening which i'm 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 pulling for it, dude. I'm praying on the downfall. Is that wrong of me? This is awesome. I love the internet. Anyways, fought.